morning, everyone. Sorry, uh, I'm a bit nervous this morning. Um, I'm just not sure. I've got all my mind like in the racing, you know, last night. I was like, oh, I had that mindset like, oh, should I just call in sick? <laughs> or should I just, you know, I had that mind like, I'm, I'm ready. I'm like, I want to do this. But like, oh, am I ready? I'm like, I'm questioning. I'm sort of semi doubting myself. But I hope you guys are all right tonight, uh, this morning. Um, what sort of spurred me is like, generally, like, you know, um, I sort of wanted to help Victor partly uh, every now and then, uh, especially when you saw him do like the campaign, you know, there's those two weeks where he's just doing 12 hours a day and it, I could sort of see like, you know, he's probably, probably needs a bit of help here. And you know, when there's, ta- there's times when, you know, he's, he's sick, you know, I think we shouldn't have like not church, like we should have always a church open for everyone. Um, so you know, not just me, but hopefully other men like could, um, can prepare a sermon. I know a few of us um, probably have it in ourselves that we can we know enough or and just have to develop that you know skill and um, I know uh, Ashy Ashton I've known each other for a while I, I know you guys have it in you so I hope you guys can it would be good to see you guys get up here as well um, and I know Ashy even Christine's heard me preach in old church and I, I'm, I don't think I'm that well like my, my best experience was in a nursing home where you could just preach whatever and they're, they're sleeping right so but, but um, <clears throat> hopefully, I uh, hope it's not a bait and switch today where, you know, we're, you're expecting Victor and then, oh, I'm disappointed, but I'm going to trust the word today. I'm here. I didn't want to give up because I think this, this, uh, this sermon helped me. <laughs> I was like, I thought of the title, I'm like, no, I have to go here today. I have to preach the, gospel, uh, the word. So I want to read the, the, my passage that I wanted to focus on this morning. Uh, 1 Corinthians 9. Know ye not that they which run in the race run all, but one receiveth the prize, so run that ye may obtain. And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. I therefore so run, not as uncertainty, so fight I, not as one that beateth the air, but I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means, when I preach to others, I myself should be cast away." Um, just before I continue, I just want to um, pray. So let's close our eyes and our heads. Dear God, I just thank you, Lord, for this morning that we can open your word once again. And uh, I just really pray you help me uh, just to have a uh, coherent thought and just to be able to preach freely and um, not jumping around too much. And uh, just pray you help my nerves. Uh, just thank you for the people before us. And I do pray that they take away something that, um, you know, through the week, through their lives, that they, they can just focus on you, give you the glory. And uh, just thank you once again for our salvation, that through your death, burial, and resurrection we are saved. And um, may we just give it all back to you, Lord, through our lives. Bless the preaching, bless your word today, and pray your spirit and your word will work in us. In your name, Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. So this morning, I wanted to focus on uh, running the Christian race. You know, I think it's more of like a a triathlon rather than a sprint, right? Like, um, I know our brother here does a lot of uh, CrossFit. It's it's hard training, you know. it, it, when, you're, when you're preparing for the Christian life, so you're going through all the hard times, you're going for the long run. It's not a sprint. You're going to burn out. So I think, if you think about it like a triathlon, like they have like, you know, the, the swimming, they have the running, the cycling. It goes, it's hard. It's ups and downs, and you have to push through. So I think uh, I'm going to try to touch on like the mentality of the Christian, how to run the race, running the Christian race. So the first point I wanted to bring up is uh, run to be the best. You know, it's, you have to have that sort of mind in yourself, like, you, you want to be competitive, right? Like, you, you don't, no sports person will like, you know, I'm just going to, especially a boxer, imagine they're fighting to be, like, to bite, to fight, boxing, and they're trying to, you see, you see all the training videos where they're just punching the back, like, yeah, 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 but in their mind, it's like, you know what, I'm doing this just so I can lose. No one does that, no one has that mindset where, like, I'm going to go up there and get beat. We have to have the Christians, have that mindset as Christians, like, you know, we, we want to run, we want to re- run to be the best. Because we have here in that first, uh, verse 24, know, know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize. So run that ye may obtain. So you have to have that mindset, you know what, I'm going to go for it. I'm going to be competitive. I want to be the best. You don't want to have that mindset where, you know, I, I'm just going to lose. I, I don't care about my Christian life. I want to no. You have to turn around and have to be the best Christian you can be. Um, and so, when you're having that mindset, once again, like whether it be reading your Bible, praying, or preaching, or just being a Christian in general, you have to have that mindset in all areas of your life. I'm going to run so I can obtain to be the, for Christ. I have this verse here in Philippians chapter three. <clears throat> uh, Not as though I had already obtained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend 
that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended by this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. So we already know Paul, what he's done in his life, right? Like he, you can, most Christians would say, like, you know, he's one of the greatest Christians we have in, uh, in terms of an example. And, um, but yet here, you know, he's always, he's always pushing for more. He's always wanting for more. You know, he's, he's saying here, not as though I've already attained. You know, some of us here, we're probably happy with, you know, where we are as Christians. Like, we, may, we just go to church on a Sunday. Maybe I hear it once a, day, once a week. You know, I might open my Bible here and then. No, you have to act like you, you haven't attained Christianity already. You, haven't, have, you have to kind of act like you've already reached, run the race. So Paul here, you know, he's going through his life. You've seen in, in some sermons prior, we've seen what he's gone through. Shipwrecks, troubles, struggles, trials. And yet he's, he's always saying, you know, I'm always going to push, uh, especially in the next verse, you know, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. So if you're in your... Christian life, and you already think like, you know, I'm happy here, I'm happy just coming to church on a Sunday, I'm just happy, you know, hearing the Bible preached to me, maybe think about it more, you know, you haven't attained already, have that mindset, well, I haven't attained enough, I want to move on, I want to improve, how do I improve? And that's how you keep thinking, like, you always mark down what you can think you can improve on in your Christian life, you know, just coming here on a Sunday and maybe hearing the Bible, that's not enough for a Christian, you know, at the end of the day, at the end of your life, you know, you want to go, you're like, I want to... I want to be an influence to, you know, the next generation, the generation after. Our children's children. You can't act like you've already attained it. Either we're already perfect. You know, I have a point later on that I want to touch on. But some of us think like, you know, we, we, we're full already with knowledge. You know, the preaching and the doctrine that we have here, we think we've already reached it. But when you, when you haven't actually taught your kids, you haven't lived it in your life, you know, you haven't attained it, and you, you haven't, you're not really perfect. So you have to keep going with your Christian life. Always think and always push. Like, how can I get better? In what areas? How can I influence others? How can I influence my brothers in Christ, my children, or other people's children? You've got to always think, in what ways can I improve? You know, you may not be up here. You might be at home. But for the men especially, you know, why, why don't we especially improve in soul winning? You know, or anyone for that matter. Anyone can go out, and if that's one area you're lacking in, you know, obtain for it. We haven't perfected it already just sitting here. We should always go out. You know, we need more people out there preaching the gospels, door knocking. And so if you're scared, don't worry, it's a stepping stone. You have to go there. You're never going to attain it fully. And, you know, even for those that have been out, you know, that every week, there's, there's doors that we still struggle with, you know. There's doors that, you know, how do we interact? It's always a learning battle. So you always have that mindset, you know. You never, you never settle um, <clears throat> that you've attained it. You've never settled that you've already perfected Christianity, especially if you're not going soul winning, especially if you're not influencing your children, your family, other brothers and sisters in Christ with the, with the Word of God. Okay, so the next thing I want to continue on, <clears throat> in verse 13 I want to say, like, brethren, Paul says, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but there's one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind. And maybe some of us are stuck in the past, uh, maybe like, you know, we got saved late in life, or maybe you've been saved long and you've just fallen out of the race. You know, you're, you, you're once up here running really hard and then you've dropped off. You know, why don't we pick it up once again? You haven't attained. You haven't, you haven't perfected Christianity. You want to keep running the race. So when you're, as Christians, especially for those that have been here in the race in a long time, you know, you shouldn't be giving up. You shouldn't get weary. But for those, you know, maybe that we've, we've got saved in life, you're like, oh, you know, God's not going to use me. You know, we throw out excuses here and there. I don't have it here on, on the slides, but, you know, Moses had that excuse to God, like, you know, how can I go to Egypt and get the people out? Yeah, I can't speak. God gave him uh, Aaron. So, you know, God was always going to help you. If you just give it, give it and commit your time and your ways to God, he will help you. It's a race once again. It's, he's got to show, you've got to show your work in terms of um, attaining to Christ, and he will help you. <clears throat> but don't have that mindset where, you know, I, I'm going to, I'm not... I'm not going to do it. I'm just not good enough. That's not the mindset of running the Christian race. You've got to run to obtain. And having a mindset of giving up, you know, that, that's it. You know, we, we, we don't have much time in this life. So don't live in the past. Whatever's holding you back, I'm not sure whatever, whatever sin it may be, um, God will use you if you're just willing to go up and run the race hard. But have that mindset where you've got to get in the Word. You've got to get in prayer. You've got to get around God's people. And that's how you grow. 
All right, we have in 1 Timothy chapter 6, Paul saying, Fight the good fight of faith, lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called, and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight, I have finished my course, I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which is the Lord, which the, which the, which the Lord the righteous judge shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. <clears throat> so Paul's here saying, I have fought the good fight. I want you at the end of the race, at the end of your life, say, you know, I fought good. You know, you see all these um, like legendary sports stars, you know, at the end, you see their career resumes. You know, these guys have done well. But you know what? With, with Christ, with God, we have something greater. We have something greater in with the, with the word, we have something more valuable than what uh, the world can give us. And yet, we should have, be able to go at the end of our race saying, you know, I have fought a good fight. <clears throat> and so, don't look back in your life. Whatever's holding you back, just push through. Fight through it. Whatever, um, if you think of all the training and, and all the hard times you go through, um, particularly me, like I've, I used to play basketball a lot. And, you know, there's times where I'm training, and even now I'm injured, you know, I always think, like, you know what, I'm just going to hang up the boots. But, no, that's not how you fight a good fight. You never give up. You fight the good fight through the ups and downs, through the, through the valleys and even the high tops. You always push through. You always have to fight the good fight of, as a Christian, and you never give up. <clears throat> and um, you always get knocked down, but you're, you should always get back on your feet, because that's, you, that's part of the fight. You're going to get hit in the face, you know, as that f funny saying says, you know, everyone has a plan until they get punched in the face, right? So you always have to fight the good fight. There's always going to be a back, um, you know, someone fighting back. But don't, be, don't quit. Don't be shaken up. Always continue on. Fight the good fight of faith. Um, <coughs> another point I want to continue on is, you know, we do it with your might. When you're fighting, you want to do it with your might. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 says, go thy way, eat thy bread with joy, and drink thy wine with a merry heart. <clears throat> For God now accepteth thy works. Let thy garments be always white, and let thy head lack no ointment. Live joyfully with thy wife, whom thou lovest all the days of the life of thy vanity, which he hath given thee under the sun. All the days of thy vanity, for that is thy portion in this life, and in thy labor, which thou takest under the sun. Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with thy might. For there is no work nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave, whither thou goest. So we don't have much time in our life, and you think about it, you know, we only have, what, 50, 60 working years of our life. We, if you live like 70 to 80 years, you know, you, you're productive from 20 onwards. You know, at the end of your life, uh, you want to get to that point where, you know, I, I'm, I've fought the good fight. But here, you know, as, as Solomon's writing here, you have all this time in your life, do it with your might. You've got to do it with your might. Because one day, you'll get to the end of the day, or you get to the end of your life, and there's no more what you can do. You know, I, I particularly think of um, when I was in a youth camp a long time ago, there was a famous, you know, maybe those in the Baptist circles know of uh, preacher Gilbert Anger. And there's one time where he's like, you know what, when I was in high school, this is when I'm in high school, he's saying, like, when I'm in high school, I'm, I'm looking back like, I should have just went really hard, you know. There's, what's, what's high school? It's five, seven to seven years of your, your teenage life, you know, you should have went hard. And you know, in my, in year 11 and year 12 for me, you know, I, I was probably a bit more in a social school and um, a bit more casual. And I, I let it go. I wasted two years of my life there, really. And um, it sent me back long. You know, but with Christianity, you know, you have your life. You, have, you, you shouldn't have that mindset where, you, you know what, I'll just do it later. I'll put it off. I'll, I'll teach. I'll be, better, I'll be a better Christian when I'm 40, 50, 60. No, it's always now. You should always go have that mindset. You know, I'm not going to waste time. I'm going to do it. Because you know what? <clears throat> For there is no work, no device, no knowledge, no wisdom in the grave. When you're dead, it's too late. You know, you're going to put off your life when you're 30, when you're 40, 50, 60. I'm going to do it later. You're always going to say that. You know, next, next your thing you know, you're in the grave. And um, hopefully, you know, when people say your eulogy, you know, they're going to say, you know what? This guy was a faithful, committed Christian to God. You know, he influenced us. We had, we received, we can see Christ in him. Wouldn't that be like a great thing, as a good thing as a race for you? Ephesians 5, it says here in verse 14, Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. 
See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. <clears throat> you know, so once again, we have a short time in our lives. You know, redeeming the time is that mindset where you're buying back the time. We're already wasting a lot of time, our mind and our time on, on certain things, on mundane things. You know, even myself today, these days, you know, I'm still, I get back home, you know, from, from work, like, oh, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to talk about it, oh, I don't want to play with my son, I don't want to influence my son with the Bible, you know, you're always trying to make excuses, but no, the Bible says redeeming the time, because the days are evil, you know, we already know how the world is like, we already know how, you know, the governments act these days, but we've got to redeem the time, you know, we've already wasted so much time um, on things that we shouldn't be worrying about, you know, we might have, uh, maybe some of you guys watch movies, Netflix shows, or I'm not sure. But we always have that time. But the Bible's saying, redeeming the time. Are you getting in the, the Bible these days? Are you opening up with your family in prayer? You know, why do you, have you ever opened up, taken the, the prayer list home and, and, you know, prayed with your family? You don't have to do it in once a day. You know, you can go through, slowly through it through the week. But are you redeeming the time? Are you spending time with your family, at least opening up, you know, just a moment in your time, just saying, hey, you know, um, Atticus or whoever your kids may be have you opened up the word to them have you ever shared or even with a brother in Christ who needs help you know we, we've got to help each other grow as Christians redeeming the time because the days are evil and that's one way where you can think about it running the race you know you're always buying as much time as you can you're buying back that time that you've already lost because you we're trying to redeem the time as Christians and the best way once again to get into the word Spend time in prayer with family and friends. You know, why don't you call each other up during the week? Like, you know, hey, um, I'm, I'm praying. Can you, let's pray together, maybe on the phone, or let's meet up, let's pray. Why don't we get together as Christians throughout the week and just challenge each other? You know, we've got to think about how we can prove as a, as a Christian, individually and as a community, as a group, we've got to redeem the time because the days are evil. <clears throat> and uh, as the Bible says, you know, um, our life is like a vapor. You know, I always used to think that, our life was, you know, a, a droplet of water, but it's actually less than that. You know, when you have like a little water in your hand and you just throw it in the air and you see all the mist, right? How long does that last for? That's, that's not very long. It's just psh, gone. That's like our life, you know? We don't have much time in this, on this earth. You think you have time. You know, you think like, oh, you know, I'm just going to, I just, one hour, um, I'll get back to it. No, redeem the time. You've got to redeem more of your time than to waste it. Because our life is just like a vapor. You know, it just appears for a little time and then vanishes away, the Bible says. So when you have that mindset, you know, redeeming that time because our, the days are evil and our time is short here on earth. <clears throat> and uh, one way, I guess, you can think about it, you know, when you're at work, right, we all have bosses or supervisors and maybe some of them are strict or some of them, you know, you don't want to, you don't, you don't want to see. So, you know, if you think about it, our boss is really Jesus Christ. Uh, Colossians chapter 3, and whatsoever you do in word and deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. <coughs> Sorry. So, whatever you're doing, just think about it. You know, I'm doing this for Christ. You know, we're not going to watch TV for Christ, maybe if you're learning a documentary for family, but you're not, you're not going to spend time, um, you know, wasting time in games, mundane things. If Christ, if you, you're doing things for Christ, you know, once again, we're dreaming the time, but in your mindset, one way to think about it is, if Christ was with me today, what would I be doing? If Christ was with me right here in this room, how would I act? How would I treat my family? How, how should I open in the next, you know, for parents that go home um, after work, you know, you only have two, three hours, you can spread it out. Like, hey, how can I teach my children? If, if God was here, how can I share the word? How can I be that example? So whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. <clears throat> If you jump down to the verses later on, verse 22, Servants, obey in all things your masters according to the flesh, not with eye service, as men pleases, but in singleness of heart, fearing God, and whatsoever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men, knowing that, the, knowing that of the Lord ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance, for ye serve the Lord Christ. So verse 23 is one that I want to focus on, is whatsoever you do, do it in heartily as to the Lord and not unto men. So if you're working, whether it be at your job um, or doing things at home, especially if you're at work, you know, you, do it, you should do it as unto the Lord. That's part of your race. You know, how you live your life out in here in the, in the world, it's part of your race as a Christian. How am I being an example to those about me? How am I being a Christian to, my, to the people at work? Or, you know, 
if you're a business owner, how am I, being a, a business, uh, Christian-minded um, business owner, how can I share in some way the idea that Christ is glorified or we need to be more uh, Christ-minded? And um, even in terms of working, you know, you'd probably be working more productively if, if your boss is, was around, right? Imagine your supervisor or your boss was just watching you every single time of the day. They're like, oh, you know, is that, is that worker, um, what's he doing? And um, <clears throat> in, in year 12, when I had um, my woodworking assignment, we had one year, like basically in that year, we had one lesson where like this is how the, the teacher gave us like one lesson, like this is the design process, you have one year now to complete it. And um, basically that whole year, we didn't have any class. It was just him, if we could go to him and, and needed work or to, to know something, we'd go to him individually with our projects. So that year, you know, we all, we all um, he, he'd, he'd dress us, like every class, he'd address us for the first 10 minutes and he'd walk away. Like he's like, all right guys, we, you have your, I'm just gonna teach you quickly for 10 minutes, I'm gonna go away and you can do your, you can use the, the machines here. You know, once he left, you know, we're all just mucking around, you know, in, in that class, just like playing around with the tools, the computer, playing games. But imagine if Jesus was, you know, your, your supervisor, your teacher, you'd, you'd be there. You know, you'd be like, oh man, God's, God's watching me. You should have that mindset, you know, it's weird. You know, God is omnipresent. We know that he's there in the back of our minds, but are you acting it though? You know, you have to have that mind presently in your head, like God is watching me always, whether in school, work, Wherever I am, God is always there. And I should do this as unto him. You know, are you doing your work as unto God? Are you doing, living your life as unto God? Because you should as a Christian, as you run the race. <clears throat> you know, that mind, like, when the, when the cat's away, the mice play. You have that, um, that funny saying there, like, that's true. Like, you know, you sometimes you, you, casual, you, you get casual, you slack off a bit. You're not as productive when the supervisor's around. But no, as a Christian, you should be working hard because you're doing it for God. No matter where you are in life, you know, you, you might think, oh, I'm stuck here for 12 hours. You know, those 12 hours, you're with Jesus. You know, he's watching you. You know, and there's always ways to make the workplace better, be productive. And um, so I have that mindset in you, like, you know, I'm going to serve God in my heart, in my mind. <clears throat> you know, one thing I liked about um, Joshua, at, close to the end of the, the book of Joshua, Joshua left nothing undone. Um, and in this verse in Joshua 11.15, it says, As the Lord commanded Moses his servant, so did Moses command Joshua, and so did Joshua. He left nothing undone of all that the Lord commanded Moses. So just to recap, um, maybe those are not familiar, Moses was supposed to speak to a rock, and he, oh, sorry, Moses, uh, God was wanting Moses to send um, the, the nation going to the promised land, and he actually told um, Moses to speak to a rock, but instead he got his, his rod and he struck it twice, right? And so that's when God says, you know what, uh, you're not going to go into the promised land, you're just going to see it. So he then committed that, you know, that um, taking the land to Joshua. And so what I liked what Joshua says about Joshua here, that he says he left nothing undone of all that the Lord commanded Moses. You know, you don't want to run the race, um, the Christian race particularly, you know, you don't want to leave anything undone. You want to get to the end and say, you know what, I have left nothing undone. I want the Bible, I want people to say that, I want God to say that he left nothing undone. Whatever it may be, you know, there's, there's always a balance to life and that's why, it, we'll get into it soon, that um, <clears throat> balance your life is hard, but you want to get to the end where you're balancing it and you get there and you left nothing undone. <coughs> Sorry. <laughs> Stick with me. Um, next point I want to say is don't settle for being average. Revelation chapter three, and the angel of the Lord, oh sorry, and the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write these things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, and thou art neither cold or hot. I would thou wert cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth, because thou sayest I am rich, and increased with goods, and have need of nothing. And knowest not that thou art wretched, and miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked. I counsel thee to buy me of gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and, the, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with eye slave, that thou mayest see it, as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten, be zealous therefore, and repent. 
Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and, I, and will sup with him. And he with me to him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am set down with, the father, with my father in his throne. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. So the Bible is saying, or Jesus, the, the angel is saying to these, <coughs> to the church of Laodiceans, I would that thou wert cold or hot and not lukewarm. You know, if you have somewhere better to be in church, than church on Sunday, then be there. You know, we shouldn't be here like just trudging along, pretending and playing church or the Christian life. You know, if you want to be running the race, you shouldn't be lukewarm. As a Christian, it's either you, God would rather have you be cold or hot. You know, he doesn't want half, half-hearted people into the battle of Christianity. You know, you, I do encourage you guys, even though you think you don't have much, give it your all, give it your best. You never know what you have. But don't be lukewarm where you just settle for being average. <clears throat> and so some of us, maybe, you thought you, 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 we've been here at church five, seven years, you know, you think that's it, you know, this is all there is to life. Then maybe challenge yourself. Be, be hot for God. May keep challenging yourself to be better for Christ. Not lukewarm. If you're just settling and you're just stable and you're stale in your Christian life, not moving and proving, you know, I challenge you to be hot. But otherwise, you know, if you have somewhere else better to be in church than church on a Sunday, if you're thinking of other things, then why don't you just stay cold? Or do you, if you're here, you be here. Be, be present. Whatever your hand findeth to do, do it with thy might. <coughs> and so... <coughs> I just want to continue saying, challenge you, like, you should always, as a Christian, improve. You're always running that race as a Christian. You know, you're always proving, and you're not going to go half-hearted into a race. You want to always run that race hard. First Timothy chapter 4. Uh, but refuse profane and old wives' fables, and exercise thyself rather unto godliness. For bodily exercise profits a little, but godliness is profitable unto all things, having promise of the life that now is, and of that which is to come. But I say... But this I say, he which soweth sprangly shall reap also sprangly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. <clears throat> Here's another verse I wanted to use. Um, so what did I want to point out here is that as a Christian, whatever you're investing here or in your children or in your life as a Christian, you know, that's what you're going to get. If you're only going to go and just pretend and play Christianity, you know, you're not going to get much out of, out of your Christian life. You're going to probably be more into the world. You know, you cannot serve God and mammon. You cannot serve God in yourself. You either choose one or the other. So here you want to reap, if you want to reap much of what God wants, then you sow much, as the Bible says. But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. Uh, for those that, you know, exercise a lot or work out, you know, especially when you're beginning, you think like the, fir the first two weeks where you, you feel like you've exercised a lot and you feel like, yeah, I'm pumped up. But, you know, two months later... Yeah, you start to feel like you're worn down, like, oh, you know, am I improving? That's when you keep going on. That's when you keep sowing. You know, that's when you're still pumping on. Same with Christianity. You might feel stale, like, you know, how am I improving? Or what's, what's God doing in my life? You know, what do you get in? You know, get into, we have many things to do in, in church, especially with soul winning, but there's many areas where we can improve in admin uh, or even just teaching the children or even outside of, you know, from Monday to Saturday, we can get together. You know, how... <clears throat> If you want to sow with, um, if you want to, sorry, reap uh, a lot, you should always sow. We should always invest in each other. And if you, if you want to uh, reap bountifully, you sow bountifully. <coughs> you have to put in the work. <coughs> um, the next big point that I want to bring is be temperate in all things. So coming back to 1 Corinthians 9, and the Bible says, And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. So, uh, I always thought temperate, temperate was like some like, form of patience, like, you know, he's temperate, he's, he's, he's patient in, in the mind. But I think it's more like, you know, reading the room or acting in the right way in every scenario, or in, in scenarios, in every scenario. Because um, if it was patience, uh, in, in the verse I wanted to show you, Second Peter 1, um, and beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness Brotherly kindness and to brotherly kindness, charity. So verse 6 is saying, you know, add to, uh, and to temperance, patience. So I would say they're different things. So I, I think more inclined, like, you know, if, if you want to 
Every man that striveth the master is temperate in all things. You know how to act in all, in all ways. You know, when it's time to be angry, you be angry. When it's time to raise up as a Christian, that's when you should. And uh, when it's time to be sad, it's time to be sad. But that's, that's how I understand uh, how this verse is teaching. But <clears throat> in all things, you know, you get, you get Christian, Christians that are specialized in certain, uh, certain you know, doctrines or specialities. You know, the Bible is saying you should be temperate in all things. In all things. So when you're running the Christian race, you, know, you don't always just focus on one thing. You want to be temperate in all things if you want to be, strive for that mastery. Right, you know that that um, that thought. You know, uh, I'm fear the guy that um, practices one kick a thousand, ten thousand times, and the, the man that kicks um, ten thousand kicks once. You know, why don't we have that middle ground where you know you're striving for all those kicks and you're practicing it many times in different areas, and um, have that mindset, have that mastery. Like, you know, what areas are you lacking in your Christian life? You know, maybe those are things, the areas you need to address. You want to be temperate in all things. <clears throat> And uh, it says this in Titus chapter uh, 2. But speak thou the things which become doctrine, sound doctrine, that the aged men be sober, grave, temperate, sound in faith and charity and patience. So, you know, when you get to the, as you're aging, you know, the, one of the things is you 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 be temperate, as the aged men be sober. So that's one thing as you're growing in your Christian life, as you're running the Christian race, you, know, you want to be temperate in all things, not be unbalanced. Um, you want to have that just balance. And um, one thing that we should strive for also is to have, um, have the, sorry, that mindset that we're doing this for an incorruptible crown. <clears throat> First Corinthians chapter 9. And every man that striveth for the things, uh, for the mastery is temperate, oh, sorry. For, for other foundation can no man lay than that which uh, is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, Every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide, which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. So, if you think about it, what are you, what are you laying up uh, for yourselves? Are you laying up for yourselves here treasures where moth and dust doth corrupt, and thieves break through and steal? Or are you building up treasures in heaven, where you know you, the good... Gold, silver, precious stones, or you, is your work going to be burnt up as your wood, hay, and stubble? So if you think about it, you know we're, we're striving you know, in our in our 50 years of working life. What are we trying to What are we trying to attain for? Well, it should be the mindset that we're, um, whoops, sorry, having an incorruptible crown, having that mindset. You know what? All things are temporary here. We're going to have that long race. We're going to have that mindset. You know, at the end of my life. I'm going to reach unto that, ver- that thing, the incorruptible crown, and, um, <clears throat> and not something that's temporary. <clears throat> um, and the next point I want to talk about is not, un- not as uncertainty. So in 1 Corinthians chapter 9 is, I therefore so run, not as uncertainty, so fight I, not as one that beateth the air. So... <clears throat> When you're running the Christian race, you know, you have to have that mindset like, what is this race about? How am I going to grow? How am I going to learn? And um, Paul's writing here that so far I, not as one that beateth the air. Some, some of us have maybe the, the, the Bible knowledge, the, the understanding of some parts of the Bible, but if you haven't been battle tested, if you haven't lived in the world and proven yourself as a Christian, you're fighting as someone that beateth the air. And um, so I, w- I wanted to challenge you guys as Christians, you know, always improve in your Christianity, whether it be doctrines you're lacking or even character, so fight so that you're not beating the air, you're always being battle tested, how can I improve as a Christian? Um, there's one example here I wanted to, for those that are into mixed martial arts, and there's a, there's a fighter named Nerdzilla, and um, he's like a Muay Thai fighter, and um, he's got a pretty impressive record, you know, like an 80% win rate, he's got 130 wins or so, and th- only 30 losses, but if you beat him, you know, the, world, the, the fighters of the world would be like, you know, if I could beat this guy, he's like a mini boss, or he's like a boss in a, in a game where if I could beat him, like, that's a big achievement. And so this guy, Gabriel Varga, he, he uploaded a video on YouTube, like, how I beat Lerdzilla. And you see the comments like, wow, like, you, you really had to study the opponent. You really had to learn him. Because you see how, how Lerdzilla's fighting, he's just crazy. He's just 
The way he dodges things is like the Matrix sometimes. He's just, woof, woof. He's dodging everything. And yet, so this guy, he couldn't just go into the fight. He knew it. Like, if I was going to beat this guy, I had to learn it. I had to fight. I had to study this guy. Because everyone has, you know, habits and, and ways, you know, tells that you can, uh, you can figure out when he's going to kick or what he's going to do. So this guy had to study. He had to look at all the footage of his previous fights, and he had to learn the fight. So in our, in our Christianity, we have to learn the race. And um, one way to do it is, in obviously getting to the Bible, it says this in 2 Timothy chapter 2, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the, work, the word of truth. So as a Christian, you know, that's one way to learn the race, getting into the Bible. You know, we have the pitfalls already, like if you're not in the Bible, how can you know what's the race? Because the Bible says this in Psalms 119 verse 105, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. You know, especially for the young people, if you're, if you're not getting into the word right now, you know, how can you say, I know what God's going to have for me when I'm, I'm old? Don't put it off now. Get into the word. You never know what Christ, Christ has got far greater things for you than you can imagine. But you have to get into the word. You have to understand it. You have to read it. The Bible says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet so, and a light unto my path. So if once you get into the word, you know, you, God's going to direct you through his spirit, through his word. He's going to direct you in life. <clears throat> but you have to get into it. You have to study it. You have to know what it is. You have to have that mindset. You know, I'm going to have the Bible directed me. I'm going to have the spirit of God direct me in my life. But you have to get into the word. And um, so if you're making decisions in your life, you're, you're trying to run the Christian race, and you think, you know what, I don't need the Bible. Well, you're wrong. You need the Bible. You need the word. God's going to direct your race through the word of God. <laughs> and, um, and you think you think about it. You know, if you think you're you're, you're going to run the race without without God, without the Bible, or without um, coming to church and um, being edified that way, you know, the Bible says this in Jeremiah chapter twelve, verse five: If thou hast run with fo the footmen and they have wearied thee, then how canst thou contend with horses? And if in the land of peace wherein thou trustedest, we wearied thee, then how wilt thou do in the swelling of Jordan? You know, how can you? Run the Christian race, not being in the Word of God, you know, and you think like, you know what, I'm going to be doing something for God one day. I'm going to do this and that for God. I'm going to do, raise my kids this way. Well, if you're not opening the Bible, then you're ready in the back foot. You know, you're not, you're not running the race as God wants you. How can God direct you if you're not into, his, into the Word? So you've got to learn the race, and you learn it partly, mostly through reading the Bible, studying to show thyself. It's proved unto God. The next thing also, you've got to learn the competition because <clears throat> we're in a spiritual battle. Ephesians 6, verse 12, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So we know um, already, we can see you know, the last two years how the world's been turned, right? And there's probably some, in some way or some form, I, I don't know how to put it to words, but like this obviously rulers of the darkness of this world. But here, if we have the word, we have church, you're here, you're in the race. But you should also learn the, um, who you're fighting against. You know, you think work's enough? There's more than, to that than that. You know, don't be wearied by work. There's spiritual forces in place. And if you get the Bible, if, you have, if, you have, if you're reading the word every day, which I, should, I recommend, you should. You should always have that mindset. You know, God's going to um, guide me, direct me. He's going to show me the enemies. He's going to show me well, uh, give me wisdom and understanding and knowledge. If you seek for it, he's going to give it to you. It says this in James chapter 4. Submit yourselves therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify hearts, you double-minded. So, God wants to see you do the work. If you're going to put in the hard yards, if you're going to put in the time of prayer, you're going to invest in time, if, you, if you're going to sow, God's going to draw nigh to you. It's going to be both sides. And um, <coughs> so don't think that you can just rock up to Christianity, rock up to church, and think, you know what, this is enough. No, you've got to draw nigh to God. You're always going to improve. You're always going to run that race hard. So you've got to submit yourselves therefore to God and resist the devil. Because that's, that's who we're facing against. We're facing against the spiritual darkness of this world. We can't see. We, got, we don't know. We don't know what the forces are like. It's above us in a sense. But the Bible says, submit yourselves therefore to God. And draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. You always want God on your side. You know, if you think about the, the coach uh, when you're fighting, or 
whether in a boxer or, if, or even in sports, you know, you want to hear that coach. God is our coach. You want to hear from him. And, and his playbook is the Bible. You want to draw nigh to God, and he'll draw nigh to you. <clears throat> and um, other, other enemies that we have, you know, we, we have to respect. You know, there is something greater and in, in, in forces in the ways that we can't control. Or, or um, That's why we have to get back to God. It says in Jude, uh, Jude verse 9, Yeah, Michael, the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses, does not bring accusation to him. Uh, bre- does not bring accusa- against him a railing accusation, but, say, but said, the Lord rebuke thee. <clears throat> so even Michael, the archangel, you know, we, we think he's, he's, got, he's got something greater than we, we, we can do. He can probably influence things uh, more than what we can do. Yet he's saying he's not... He's not um, bringing in a railing accusation against the devil. So that's why we as Christians, you know, as human beings in the flesh, we should always trust in the word, getting into the Bible, drawing nigh to God through word and prayer and being with God's family. And, um, and also, I like this, uh, this, this uh, story in, in Matthew 17. It says in verse 18, And Jesus rebuked the devil, and he departed out of him. And the child was cured from that very hour. And came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, Why could not we cast him out? And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, If ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Howbeit this kind goeth out, not out, but by prayer and fasting. So sometimes we probably have a struggle or a hardship in our life. But how, many time, how much time are you spending in prayer especially? You know, as I said, you know, we still have this prayer list outside, and if you haven't taken one, I, I, I encourage you to take one. But have you prayed for the brothers here? Have you prayed to God and said, God, help me. God, give this person wisdom. God, give this person knowledge. Give us the strength and the knowledge and the wisdom. Are you praying to God to help you? You know, in some ways, in some struggles, as, as, um, <clears throat> we don't know what to do maybe. We, we, we've hit a roadblock in life, but are you praying? Are you praying? Are you spending time with God in the prayer? Are you spending in time in also fasting? So how serious are you in Christianity? You know, in Islam, they have that, that month of Ramadan where the, I know it's only 12 hours a day, um, but that just shows you how much, you know, they really believe in it. But as Christians, you know, are we even spending a decent amount of time in prayer for each other? That's one area probably we lack in, you know, in our closet, prayer closet. Are you also fasting? You know, if a brother in Christ have a need, like, you know, are you going to God, like, are you even going, foregoing food, your needs, just to say, God, help this person. You know, this, this, this need is more important than my food. Are you going to God, saying, God, help me. We need your help. And so some ways and some roadblocks in the Christian life, you know, when you're running the race, you know, you're going to have those times where you're struggling, you're having that mindset. You know, you know, how, can I, how, can we, how can I continue this race? You know, go, bring it to God, and he'll give you the wisdom and knowledge. So, <clears throat> when you learn the race also, and we're learning the enemies, we're also learning of false prophets. Second Peter chapter 2 says this, But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in a damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that brought, bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be even spoken of. Spoken of. And through covetous shall they with vain words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation um, slumbereth not. <coughs> so we have these false teachers or false prophets. You know, you think of all the, the televangelists, right? They all, we all already know that's a red, big red flag. Because it says here in the Bible, in, in, in verse 3, um, with feigned words make merchandise of you. If you don't know the product, you're probably the product, as they say. You know? um, and that's how you see all these televangelists, all these you know, quote-unquote superstar Christians that have these, you know, they can speak well, but they're probably making merchandise of you. And that's one red flag as, as uh, false prophets, you know, that if people are doing it for money or gain, like saying, if you give to God, he will bless you two times. Whatever you give to God, he'll give you twice. You know, that's, that's, that's red flags there. <clears throat> so just be careful uh, learning the enemies of who's trying to make merchandise of you. 
And, um, you know, one of those famous boxers, uh, Mike Tyson, you know, he's got, if you know Don King, the, the person that basically used him for his money and milked it out of him. There's, there's those ways in, in Christian life, you know, you've got to be careful who, who's teaching you, what are they teaching for, what's the purpose? And if it's not for the purpose of God, then maybe they're doing it for um, extracting value from you. It says this in Titus chapter 1, For there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially they of the circumcision, whose mouths must be stopped, who subvert whole houses teaching things which they ought not for filthy lucre's sake. So once again, there's people that are going out there teaching things for filthy lucre's sake, for, for, for money, for gain, for value. They're going out there just trying to, trying to teach you, trip you up as a Christian, um, trying to sway you away from God, away from the, the simplicity of Christ, that they can extract value for you, from you for filthy lucre's sake. <clears throat> and um, here we have in 1 Timothy 6, And they that have believing masters, let them not despise them, because they are brethren. But rather do them service, because they are faithful and beloved partakers of the benefit. These things teach and exhort. If any man teach otherwise, and, ex- and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness, he is proud, knowing nothing, but doting about questions and strives of words, whereof cometh envy, strife, railings, evil surmisings, per- uh, perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds, and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness. From such, withdraw thyself. So in this particular um, chapter, I believe Paul is writing to Timothy, saying, you know, um, for both, um, you know, the employer and the employee, that they should work hard together, especially if they're believers, you know. And there's other people here out there, you know, if you're not careful, they're teaching otherwise, you know. They're teaching you, maybe you can slack off, maybe there's another way you can do certain things, cutting corners, or here's a way to make gain. Because it says here in verse 5, it says, supposing that gain is godliness. So there's always some way, either for Fethi Lucas' sake or for some gain, that these people, that these false teachers are prophets, they're trying to teach you to, to draw um, gain for you, but it's really, they're just trying to take it from you. Because the Bible says this, but godliness with contentment is great gain. So as a Christian, if you're running the race, you know, you've got to aim for godliness and with contentment. <clears throat> you know, Particularly last year when I was pretty heavy into crypto, I, was, I always have that mindset, you know what, yeah, again, like felt, felt feeling the moonshot. But the Bible says here, if you want that moonshot, you get into the Bible. You have godliness with contentment. It's great gain, greater than what we can ever attain here. Multiple properties, gold, whatever it may be, godliness with contentment is great gain. <clears throat> so be a good, good employee, work hard, as uh, Paul's um, telling Timothy to teach. Uh, and if you're an employer, you know, give your workers good work. You, you have to have that mutual um, benefit together, working together for Christ. <coughs> Next uh, big point I want to take is take care of your body. Um, and this is one that I sort of like because I like training somewhat. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 9. But I keep under my body and bring it into subjection. That's that by any means. When I have preached to others... I myself should be a castaway. You know, particularly in Baptist circles, I, I always thought like there's hard preaching against, you know, you know, why you guys don't stop smoking, stop drinking, you drunkards, you wine bibbers, but then you, you see them, you know, they're a bit overweight, you know, it's a bit, it's a bit hypocritical in that sense. You know, we have many, you know, great preachers that preach hard, that preach well, but, you know, they're, they're probably lacking that area, keeping their body in and um, bringing it into subjection. So that's that mindset, you know what? I'm in control here. I'm going to sleep when I sleep. I'm going to rest right. I'm going to do what's right. I'm not going to let, you know, the, the pleasures of this life get to me. I'm going to keep my body and bring it into subjection. So that less by any means, when I preach to others, so when you're talking to other people about the Bible, you know, they can't look at your, your uh, especially you, how you look, or how you live your life, the way you structure or schedule your life, and say, that you, you're your castaway. <clears throat> um, <coughs> and if you think about it, your, bio, your body is, um, is the temple of the Holy Ghost. It says this in 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Know ye not that they are the, uh, that ye are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. Be not among wine bibbers 
among riots. Oh, sorry. So yeah, verse Corinthians chapter 3 is one. If you think about it, you want to take care of your body in a way that, you know, this, the Spirit of God is dwelling in me. You know, would you trash, you know, if you had like a vase at home that was expensive or expensive item at home, you want to treat it with care, right? You don't want like dirt or uh, mud or kids kicking around it. You want to treat it properly, right? But this, your body, the temple of the Holy God. <coughs> um, you want to take care of it as best as you can. And uh, you don't want to get overweight. You want to balance your life. You want to think, uh, how can I take care of this body? You want to have that structure and that mindset and that race of Christian life. You know, I've got to take care of my body. You know, it's both physical work and also what you eat, you know. What you eat is what you are, they say. Um, if you're just eating Maccas and junk food every day, you know, maybe you've got to start working harder, like, hey, how can I eat healthier? How can I improve um, and have my body healthier? What vitamins am I lacking? What minerals am I lacking? You've got to take care of your body. <clears throat> it says this in Proverbs 23, Be not among winebibbers, among riotous eaters of flesh. For the drunkard and the glutton shall come to poverty, and drowsiness shall clothe a man with rags. So the Bible is saying here, you know, don't be, especially, I, I don't know anyone here that really gets heavy into drinking, but be not among wine bibbers, among riotous eaters of flesh. So even those that eat a lot, uh, and it reminds me once again of Baptist churches, that they love to eat. You know, they go out at back steakhouse or and whatnot. You know, the Bible's warning us, you know, not to be riotous eaters of flesh. You've got to take care of your body. You've got to have a balanced diet. You know, don't have it one-sided where you just junk convenient food, lacking min nutrients and minerals. You should have a good balance of diet and a good exercise. <clears throat> Bible says this, but be not drunk, and be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. So if you think about it, it's also in, in spiritual mindset, when you're running the race, you know, you don't want to be out there as if you're, as the Bible says, to be sober. <clears throat> but one way to be filled with the Spirit is getting into the Word and reading the Bible, obviously. But so, when you're going out as a Christian, if you're earning the race, you want to be filled with the Spirit. You know, whenever you're running that, uh, I don't know if you, has anyone ever run cross country in high school? Like, it's, I always dreaded that thing. And um, <laughs> if you don't have the food or the energy or the source to continue like running that race, you know, you get tired halfway. But the Bible says, be filled with the Spirit. If you want to take care of your body, to have the fuel running the long distance, running the triathlon of the Christian life, You've got to be in the Word. And be filled with the Spirit. Uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. Now we command you, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye withdraw yourselves from every brother that walketh disorderly and not afraid, and not after the tradition which he received, received of us. For yourselves know how ye ought to follow us, for we behave not ourselves disorderly among you. Neither did we eat any man's bread for naught, but wrought with labor and travail night and day, that we might not be chargeable to any of you. Not because we have not power, but to make ourselves an example unto you to follow us. For even when we were with you, this we commanded that if any would not work, neither should he. So that verse, I, I generally have that mindset, like, you know, breakfast is generally not a good idea, maybe, in my opinion. But as the Bible says here, this is, this is talking about people that are lazy, not wanting to work. They're trying to get off, you know, um, handouts and, and whatnot. But I, I like the mindset, like, you know, if you're not working, maybe you shouldn't eat. And um, have that plan in our dietary requirements as well, you know. Put some, put, some, um, put some work and effort before you have, you know, lunch. Maybe skip breakfast for a day. <clears throat> and, um, and, and how I understand it, you know, like, especially when you have carbs or you're eating rice and bread, it sort of puts your body into a rest mode. So usually when you have, like, the afternoon like you're feeling drowsy in the afternoon, it's probably because you had like a big lunch, especially with carbs. So that's why I think, you know, as if, you're not work, uh, if you don't work, you shouldn't eat. You're just going to feel sleepy sometimes when you're just eating all day and you're not working. So maybe as a diet idea, like, you know, you should work a bit more, push for yourself, like, you know what, I'll eat a bit later. I'm going to continue a bit more work. And um, if you ever look into fasting studies, it's, it's pretty interesting and I don't have it in slides here, but if you have a look into those things, you know, when you're fasting, your mindset's usually like some surprisingly counterintuitive that it's like you're, you're a bit energized more when you're foregoing food. One day, two days, or even three days where you're, you're having that high level of energy somehow. And, um, and so I, I think the Bible's onto something here that if any man would not work, neither should he eat. So you should put some work 
especially in Christianity, like, you know, we're all here, we're in church being fed the Word of God, but maybe it's time to go out as a Christian, especially to soul winning, putting that, putting that you know, the nutrients, spiritual food that we have here out into the, into the world, what we do. Even to secular people, you know, when, how are we speaking to others in the world? Let's, let's have that mindset as a Christian. Like how are we going to influence even people that we can win them to Christ, everyone in our workplace? <clears throat> and um, when you're running the race, I also want to quickly focus on and touch on here, and this is sort of my last point, <clears throat> that we look to Jesus. Hebrews chapter 12, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. <clears throat> Sorry. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. So we're looking to Jesus. He's run the race already. He already knows how the race will be. We're just looking to Jesus. So how one way we can run the race, we lay aside every weight. You, know, you think of a sprinters especially, or even marathon runners um, that run long distance in the Olympics. Imagine them carrying, like, running the race with a heavy-weighted vest. You know, what's the chances of them winning that race? It's going to drastically decrease the chances, right? So with a Christian, as a, as a Christian, we should run the race laying aside every weight, as the Bible says. Laying aside every weight. I'm not sure what weights you have in your life, you know, when you, when you get home, it could be whatever's distracting you away from how you're improving this, the home as a Christian. How, how you're pushing the envelope as a Christian in the home. How is your children being raised? You've got to lay aside the weight, whether it be games, movies, TVs, or even secular books, or even research in the markets, studies. You've got to lay aside the weight. You've got to surround yourself, uh, surround your schedule around what Christ in the Bible <clears throat> it says this in Mark chapter 4. And these are they which are sown among thorns, such as hear the word and the cares of this word, world, and the deceitfulness of riches, riches, and the lusts of other things entering in, choke the word, and it becometh unfruitful. So the Bible is saying here, you know, are you, are you that seed thrown among thorn, sown, uh, sown among thorns? You know, maybe you're here in church, but you go out Monday to Saturday, and you have the cares of this world, and all the deceitfulness of riches and the lust of other things entering in. Are the worldly things getting to you? Are the worldly things more important to you than what Christ has? Are the, the worldly things more important than the Bible and the Word? and praying, and uplifting each other as Christians, you're becoming unfruitful. You're not running the race as a Christian. <clears throat> so I challenge you guys, whatever's in your life, you know, you always schedule, always have the mindset, what can I cut? What weight am I laying aside that I can be a Christian? More effective, more streamlined as a Christian, so I can push for Christ. Luke 14, And they went great multitudes with him, and he turned and said unto them, If any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. And whosoever doth not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. For which of you intending to build a tower sitteth not down first and counteth the cost whether he have sufficient to finish it? Lest happily after he hath laid the foundation and is not able to finish it, all that behold it begin to mock him, saying, This man began to build and was not able to finish. What king? going to make war against another king, sitteth not down first and consulteth, whether he be able to, with 10,000 to meet him that cometh against him with 20,000, <clears> or else while the other is yet a great way off, he sendeth an ambassage and desireth conditions of peace. So likewise, whosoever he be of you that forsaketh not all that he hath, he cannot be the, my, my disciple. So the Bible, or Jesus is saying, you know, he's using strong language. You know, if you're not hating your family, or even your own life, you know, it's pretty strong. You know, he cannot be my disciple. But as a Christian, you know, you've got to think about it. Laying aside the weights, you know, is... Do you ever miss a day of the Bible because maybe things get in the way of your life? Maybe it's time to start to restructure the schedule of a life. Because Christ should be first and nothing else um, should overtake him. You know, the next thing also, we've got to lay aside the sin. It's going to try to speed up here again. It says in that, in that underlying part, and a sin which does so easily beset us. 
Now everyone has a, their own besetting sin. I'm not sure what sins you have, but once again, commit it to God. Get it into the Word and um, run that race. You know, you don't, you don't want to run the Christian race being tagged with sin, you know, you're limping. Or you, you can't run the race limped or struggling the running, uh, running that race. The Bible says, and the sin which does so easily beset us, you've got to lay it aside. And, um, and maybe even idleness is, is a great sin that will beset us. You know, you've got to fill in the time as a Christian um, with God, with the Word, with the Bible, with God's people. <clears throat> and one way, once again, it says in the Bible, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. One way is to memorize the Bible. Um, and, and memory isn't one thing you just memorize it once and that's it. Memory is a, is a working thing. You know, you usually forget in, a, in, in your life um, things that you're not rehearsing or you're practicing. God's given us a sufficient mind, like, you know, whatever is not being practiced, it's going to go away. So the Bible says, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. You've got to hide it in your heart. You know, what's your besetting sin? You know, find the Bible verses to it. Say, God, help me. Show me the Bible verses and hide it in your heart that you will not sin against him. You know, you gotta, next thing is you've got to run with patience. Once again, the online verse here. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. It says this in 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. Be, but ye, brethren, be not weary in well-doing. Galatians chapter 6. Uh, we'll, we'll skip to verse 9. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. You know, maybe you've been running hard, you've been running long in your Christian life, and you're feeling tired, you're feeling weary, like, you know, there's just other things in my life that I'm, I'm getting weary about as well. You know, but be not weary in well-doing, because the Bible says, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. So if you faint, you know, that's when you give up. That's when you quit. But you've got to keep pushing forward as a Christian. For in due season we shall reap. You know, there's many times last year when, when I was like, in, um, I know Peter would know this a lot more, that if you just held a bit of a token a bit more in crypto, like you'd, you'd, you'd feel the, you'd reap the reward. But, you know, sometimes we get so quick in, um, in our mindset, you know, we, we give up so easily that we're not holding in due season. Um, we're, we're fainting. But if you hold in due season, <coughs> we shall reap. And it says this in Galatians, uh, sorry, Galatians chapter 6, as we have therefore opportunity to do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. So those two combining, you know, if you want to work hard, you, you hold on, you never, don't be weary in well-doing, and you do good unto all men. And um, don't give up, especially if, you're, you, if you think you, your life is crowded in life, you know, you, you, things are getting into your life. Um, one example I like to have is, you know, David strengthened himself in the Lord, and this is sort of what I want to finish on uh, in one more chapter. It says in 1 Samuel chapter 30, And it came to pass... When David and his men were come to Ziklag, and on the third day that the Amalekites had invaded the south, and Ziklag had smitten, and, and smitten Ziklag, and burned it with fire, and had taken the women captives that there were therein, they slew not any, either great or small, but carried them away and went on their way. So David and his men came to the city, and behold, it was bred with fire, and their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captives. And David and the people that were with him lifted up their voice and wept until they had no more power to weep. And David's two wives were taken captives, Ahinoam and the Jezreelitess, and Abigail, the wife of Nabal, the Carmelite. And David was greatly distressed, for the, for the people spake of stoning him, because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and, his daughter, and for his daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. So you think of this... It's pretty crazy how they're going to the city of, of Ziklag and their families are taken away. The Amalekites are taking them away. You know, um, some of us probably have, have children here. Uh, we're we're um, probably getting distracted with a conversation. And for five minutes, you know, we, we don't know where our kid is. And we're like in a panic. Oh, you know, you tell your wife or your, you tell your husband like, oh, where's, where's such and such? And you're having that state of panic in your mind like, where's our kid? And, you know, that's only for a short time. But these guys are in great distress that they, they were weeping and, uh, until they had no more power to weep. These guys, you know, you think about it like if your kid's gone missing, you're, you're going to be in panic mode. But that's what, basically what happened here. And, and you think about all the people and the men with them and their families were taken. That's pretty distressing. But, and they were even thinking like, you know what, David, you led us here. We're going to stone you. Imagine as a leader, or as, a, as a leader in the home, maybe you're struggling in life. Don't give up. Don't quit. Look to Jesus. Look to Jesus. 
And this is what I like about David. But David encouraged himself in the Lord. So if you're having a hard time, if you're probably running the race and you're getting weary and you're struggling, struggle, uh, encourage yourself in the Lord. Get into the Word. Get around your people. Take a bit of a rest. And get back to God and strengthen yourself. You can imagine David. He's like, you know, these guys are going to kill me. Like these guys, some people would quit here. But it's not a time to quit. If you hold in due season, you will reap. And that's what I like about this story, what David encouraged himself in the Lord. You know, you have nowhere else to turn to. You have nowhere else to go. You know, you have the Lord. If you're running the race and you're weary, go back to the Lord. And I just want to finish in this chapter. Uh, I'll just start looking to Jesus. I have Isaiah 53 written here. And you think about what God has gone through. You know, you think about our life. Jesus himself has run... Uh, and um, it's a good example for us. And uh, just have this, as you read this thought, like, you know, what Christ is to us. It says, Who hath believed thy report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of a dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness, and we shall see him. There is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of man, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray, we have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep before his, her shearers is dumb, so he openeth not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people was he stricken. And he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death. Because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin... He shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see of the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he hath poured out his soul unto death. And he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bare the sins of many, sin of many, and made inter intercession for the transgressors. So if you're struggling... You're having a hard time, or you're running the race, look to Christ. Look to Christ. And um, that's all I wanted to preach on today. Running the Christian race, striving for Christ, striving to that one day that you know you'll have that um, mindset where God will say, you know, that good and faithful servant. And I just want once once again I just thank you for um, sitting through here and preaching. Um, that's all I have today. I'm just gonna finish up in prayer. Dear God, I just thank you, Lord, for the time we can open your word once again. I just thank you, Jesus, for, um, that we can learn uh, from you. We can run the race. We can open your word, and you'll guide us and you'll direct us with your spirit and your word. Uh, give us the strength and uh, the perseverance to continue, to work hard, to strive for the mastery, and to be temperate in all things. And um, just help us as Christians not to be uh, lazy or lukewarm, but to always strive to be better, to, be, to run the race um, to win and to have that competitive mindset we've got to be as the best Christians we can be we thank you Jesus for running that um, example for us that you did it all for us that you um, you endured such pain already and it's helped us to, as Christians to buy back the time and just thank you Jesus for all that you've done in your name Jesus Christ I pray Amen <clears throat>